Hi there. Here on this channel, we have been discussing numerous matters pertaining to bone, joint and muscle health in growing children. Today, we are going to discuss one such common parental concern, that of choosing the right footwear for children. The footwear a child wears can have a lasting impact on the developing foot. There have been a number of studies in recent literature which suggest that footwear could potentially be restricting natural motion of the foot and not just causing foot problems but has also been linked with knee and lower back issues. Most foot problems actually develop in relation to poorly styled shoes. Toe and foot deformities, corns, calluses, weak ankles, poor posture, incorrect footwear can really do the damage. Children present a wonderful opportunity to stop the foot pain before it starts. Most children are born with perfectly healthy feet. Proper shoes allow the right amount of space and support to help the foot develop naturally. So if you're interested in knowing what features to look for in children's footwear, do continue watching. Humans are one of the few species that has mastered walking on two legs and the foot has evolved to be the basis of this specialized way of walking. No wonder that the human foot is a masterpiece. It is complex, containing lots of bones, ligaments and tendons and is more than capable of carrying our bodies through life. Bunions, arthritis and orthotic shoes are largely a phenomenon of developed world. Any guesses why? Pointy, stiff-heeled shoes all day, every day can change our foot shape to such an extent that the foot can no longer do its job efficiently. Scientific studies looking at the barefoot or non-shoe wearing tribal populations of Philippines and Central Africa have noted that barefoot walking gives excellent mobility to the feet. Over a long term, these feet have no deformities and are pain-free. While barefoot is best, it is seldom practical and we do need shoes primarily for injury protection. The earliest known footwear seems to have been designed for this purpose. Soon, however, shoes evolved into becoming somewhat of a status symbol. Things like foreshoe length and heel height became predictive of prosperity right from 16th century Europe. Even to date, shoe designs have been based on the absurdities of fashion. For a child who is just beginning to learn to walk, the numerous nerve endings and receptors on the sole of the feet sense the ground and give important feedback with regards to strength, balance, proprioception, coordination and posture. The foot needs to sense and feel. So when learning to walk, the child should be allowed as much barefoot time as possible, of course in a safe environment. The best shoes for children simulate being barefoot and do not alter the natural foot motion. The mechanical stimuli thus received by the foot help to develop the bones and muscles and help the tissues to gain stability. So let me take you through some of the recommendations for fit, form and functionality of children's shoes based on science, beginning with the toe box. This is the part of the shoe that houses the toes. A baby enters this world with beautiful fan-shaped feet and toes. If we see the footprint of a newborn child, it is distinctly visible that the foot is widest at the end of toes. The footwear needs to be shaped like the foot. Therefore, the toe box needs to be quadrangular and wide with abundant space for the toes to spread. Wide, stable toes that move freely work with the hips, knees and ankles to keep the child moving well. However, if we see most footwear for children today, it is widest at the base of the toes, which can cause the toes to pinch. Narrow toe box compresses toe bones together, decreases stability, decreases arch strength and could cause ankle sprain. Young children's bodies are especially malleable and can easily be altered by their footwear, which can lead to bunions or other toe deformities later in life. Also, the toe box needs to be voluminous and have depth. 
The top of the shoe should not press down on the toes or toenails. Shoes that are too tight around this area can not only hamper walking but also cause problems like ingrown toenails, blisters, corns and calluses. Many children's shoes have a feature called toe spring which is simply an upward curvature of the sole under the toes. A rigid toe spring causes the toes to be suspended in the air and holds it there in a prolonged elevated position. Toes are very important for gaining sensory information from the ground. Toes need to be flat, spread and engaged when the child walks. Therefore, it is best to avoid shoes with toe taper and rigid toe spring. While a child is learning to walk, the sole needs to be flexible to allow the foot to move naturally. Stiff, heavily built and over-constructed shoes can prevent them from sensing the ground and also bind the intricate muscles of the foot, muscles that will waste away if not used. This can cause loss of dexterity, sensory issues and developmental delays. Shoes that are flexible and move with the foot allow muscles to stay strong and supple, developing an agile foundation. Therefore, go for flexible, lightweight, breathable shoes that stays on securely on the foot. Our feet are miraculous in that they bend, they stretch and move in all kinds of ways in order to be able to distribute forces properly. As children grow and shoes begin to get more built up, we are essentially looking for the same features. Sole flexibility, especially at the ball of the foot, is still an important feature. If the shoe is very stiff with thick, rigid soles, we take away the natural ability to do that. You may need slightly more structured and cushioned shoes if the child is engaging in sports that needs side-to-side -side stability like soccer, basketball and tennis. Also, they may be helpful temporarily in managing pain from overuse syndromes and heel or shin pain during later childhood or adolescence. Heel counter. This is a very important part of the shoe. It is located at the back of the shoe and is the part that cradles the heel and stabilizes it. It helps the shoe to hold on securely on the foot. If shoes lack a heel counter, then toes have to do the added work of gripping the shoes. This not only causes uneven force distribution, but can also cause hammer toes, tendinitis or inflamed tendons, nail problems, calluses and increase the risk for ankle injuries. A firm heel cup means the shoe has a solid back and is ideal. Shoes like these are a convenient option, but they are best reserved for occasional use like short walks. Heel to toe drop. This is the difference between how high a shoe is in the heel and the front of the foot or toe region. Most children's shoes are elevated about an inch from the heel to the toe. This can cause calf muscles and the Achilles tendon to shorten and can cause long-term problems of the same. Even small heels can push the child forward, compromising the ability to negotiate uneven terrain. Heels shift the pelvis and put the whole body out of balance and forces the ankle into an unstable position. Allowing young girls to wear heels frequently can cause back pain, growth impediment, misalignment and injuries. A completely flat shoe with no heel rise keeps the center of gravity over heels where it is the most stable. It is also helpful for better position of the toes. Children's feet grow quickly in the early years and may require new shoes every 3-4 to four months, so you may need to remeasure frequently. The shoe must fit snugly on the heel to stop the foot from moving forward while walking. If the shoe has a removable liner, take it out and have your child stand on it to give you a better sense of how much room there is. With your child's heel at the back of the insert, there should be about half an inch of space between your child's toes and the front of the insert. If the inserts are not removable, have your child put on the shoe and press down on the front of it to make sure your little one's big toe isn't bumping up against the inside of the shoe.
You may also superimpose your child's foot on the sole upside down to get some idea. Consider how the shoe is fastened. Ideally, shoes should have laces, buckles or velcro fastenings to help hold the heel in place during movement. Mind the material of the shoe. Look for shoe made of canvas, cloth or leather, all of which are porous and allow air to circulate in and out. The issue isn't so much of fixing a problem as it is not creating one to begin with. If there is no pain or other musculoskeletal issues, children's feet can and should develop without interference. Shoes must allow this to happen by providing protection but not altering the natural foot motion. In order to do that, shoes must be flexible, flat and foot shaped. So together, let's help our children start their life on the right foot.